Okay, welcome back everyone to our commentary of Star Wars The Last Jedi. We're about 1 hour and 21 minutes into the film itself and there's been a lot to say about the film. There's been a lot of praises and a lot more critiques of the film per se. And as much as I you know, laugh when I say that, I really hate it because I enjoy every Star Wars movie to an extent, even though this is my least favorite of the bunch. Following The Force Awakens, which was a good movie on its own, this movie really changes a lot and we'll carry on watching the scene from an old friend. Let's go. This reveal itself is a really nice cool, reveal. Because then you're just like, you, I didn't expect it. Yeah, I didn't expect it at all. You don't expect Yoda. If anything, you expect Obi Wan. But the interesting thing is that how Why he does looks. He looks so different. I don't like He how looks he very bad. Like, at least in the prequels. It's just not consistent. Yeah, at least in the prequels, we had the CGI and Papa ones. Papa one looked very young, but the CGI one looked more or less close enough to the puppet like in. This. Um, in the original trilogy, but yeah. consi difference is considered that he lived on Dagobah for how many years? But then in this, he looks so weird it's and a different. different. Shade of green as it's well. a very, very different shade of green. Like he should, if anything, look more prestigi prestigious or look more like he did in the original trilogy. But he doesn't. He looks just so out of place and very weird, which is hard to see. And he's got lightning powers. It doesn't make sense. I'm just raising so many more it's questions. Not, he doesn't have lightning powers. He just controlled the weather. Yeah, he can control the weather. How can he control the weather? Because he's Master Yoda. Because he's Master That's not a reasoning, is it? Because then I'm just questioning, why doesn't he come back and just use that on Snoke or something? Or just destroy a Star Destroyer, you know? If they have that type of power, you raise so many questions which need to be explored and answered. So it was understood that, you know, they're there and they're in this world and they won't interact with it per se because they have to let everything play out the way it is, but they're there for wisdom. That's what it was established in kind of the original trilogy. <laughs> this is good though. Page turners, they were not. It's a really, it's really funny. So what's done with Yoda in regards to his dialogue, I think is good. I think it would make more sense for Obi-Wan to be the one that brings Luke back. Yeah. Because Obi-Wan would have been, you know, someone he cared for more, I believe. The idea presented with failure is a good lesson yeah. to be taught. But I feel like it's very done hit and miss in this film itself. We know that Luke's already learned through failure. You know, in the original trilogy, that was the whole journey in the middle section towards the redemption in Return of the Jedi. But, but again, he's at failure. It doesn't mean that, like, you know, you make a mistake once and then that's it. Yeah. No, but the thing is, it's been 30 years and this is the... It's, it's the idea that it has to, the story has to be better presented. Because this whole trilogy, everything seems to be failing the same way it failed before. So the Republic fell in the prequel trilogy. Oh, the Republic failed again in the sequel trilogy. Oh, the Jedi failed in the prequel trilogy. Oh, the Jedi failed again in between the sequel trilogy. And then, oh, the re Rebellion was failing towards the beginning of the um, trilogy, original trilogy, and they're failing be be to the beginning of the sequel trilogy. It's all just copy and paste, you know? It's fine if you fail again and again, but at least something has to be different so that we can see that you've learned from your past mistakes. It's just like Yoda's saying, you learn from your failing, failings. Failures. Mm. Did he really think it was his ship? Mm. I don't know why Finn thought that. Why would you think it was his ship? He was in prison not that long ago. See, look, here's a problem in editing. Right now, DJ is looking from left to right right now, but in the wide shot from behind, he's looking right to left. And you keep on switching which side he's looking at, and it breaks the, our viewer's perception of the film itself, of what's happening in the scene. See, I want to know who knows what the plan is. She calls him Flyboy. She's just antagonizing him. So no one knows there's a plan. Mm. Does she really believe, like, keeping stuff from him is not going to yeah. make him reckless? But then not just him. Others. Look how scared that girl is on the side there. She knows something's going down. See, he's, he, she, how is she not a traitor when our protagonist presents she's us not, with the idea... Yeah, she's not telling... All she has to do is be like, this is what we're going to There's a base down there that we're going to go to. And then it'll be solved. And it's all solved. You know, so we, when the protagonist treat, tells us, 
she's a traitor, and when she acts like a traitor would, we're gonna believe she's a traitor. We're gonna hate the character. We're not gonna support her. Like, and if she tells him the plan, see, as she well, puts the books away there. Books away there. If she tells him the plan, he won't be like, okay, Finn and Rose go onto the ship and stuff. He'll be like, yeah. So keeping he'll tell them to come keeping back. someone you believe is reckless in the dark is just as dangerous as telling them a plan they might not agree with. Yeah. I do wonder what Ray told Chewie, or what Chewie said he'll tell Finn. But it's also interesting how she believes that Finn would be awake by now. Does no one think that his, um, you know, what his pain that he's felt is that bad? That if he can pass out from a lightsaber slash across his back, yeah. he could be knocked out for a good while. But yeah, and then we get this. At first I thought those TIE fighters were escorting her. How does her. it know where to go? Maybe she's got some controls, who knows. It doesn't look like... It's it a good question. Maybe they can target it in the computer. Who knows? I'm also questioning, there were TIE fighters flying outside the ship, so we know they have plenty more TIE fighters flying about. Why aren't they attacking the ships? Instead of just waiting it out. The reason for the fuel being the reason for the whole chase scene seems very... a bit much of a stretch. What does she bet the resistance survival on? Why? Why do you have to get clear of the troop cruiser or whatever? See, our protagonist is taking down the person we believe is a traitor. You're like, oh, what ship is this? It's yeah. an iron. Oh my god, it's so well, so well done. I'm pretty sure this is actually from some short someone did years ago. I can't remember, oh, but it? yeah, but it's a good idea. This, however, is not. He just put a bin over the droid. How is no one going to be suspicious of it? It's a moving bin. Surely they know what their bins look like. That's making beeping noise and bumping into people. Oh, and this. It was on the poster. I know, and nothing comes from it. Yeah. We had more of a droid fight from the Clone Wars episodes with R3 and R2. And it's just like, why he has his own poster? I can get why he have a pop vinyl. Everyone has a pop vinyl. But it just doesn't make sense. So here's more of that thing where I said that her journey now, she's that there's clear con um not contrast, um what do you call it when interception where people are gonna um conflict, clear conflict with what she's seen and what Luke saw and what Kylo's seen. So there's clear setup for um long term effects with her possibly standing with Kylo or Kylo joining the dark uh, light side, or as Luke says, nothing going as planned. But none of these long-term effects will really affect Rey in any way. She won't really lose anything from what happens thanks to her decision of leaving Luke and going after Kylo and everything. See, I like Snoke as well. He's sinister. He's well crafted. He looks a little weird for wearing he's, a robe. He's still fine up until and up until his end. this up until everything up past until, this. Yeah. yeah. It just doesn't really work. Oh, what a nice moment. Mm -hmm. Not really, because I don't care about Rose. Mm -hmm. Just like that. Pew! She actually says pew when she fires her gun. What? She says that. She says pew. You can see her mouth move. So what did they have to do? Did they have to stop that whole flashing? Could they have just thrown something at her? I don't know. Like, if they threw their hat, and you know, like in those things where like the hat stops the door or whatever. Could they have thrown their hat and just disrupted it for a split second? <laughs> and it worked. <laughs> That is actually very true. Resistance scan. How do they not notice him is also beyond me. Because it makes it look like BB-9E notices BB-8. Mm -hmm. He doesn't. And Captain Phasma's oh. still alive. <laughs> but this doesn't make sense at all. You know, it's very weird. But she's suddenly like fond of him. Yeah, she's suddenly fond of him and like, I like him. What? No, you don't. You were so angry at him earlier. You hated his plan. Why yeah. would you care about him at all? What did she teach you? You were a terrible leader. She got nothing right. You know, I like the moment where they both say the made of force. It doesn't. It's just like, has that ever happened before? You don't. She doesn't deserve to say it. She's such an unlikable character. Like oh, she has this moment, and you're just like, why? It's so out of place. She's yeah. so unlikable, and then for some reason we're meant to like her a lot and believe her. But why is she staying like the pilot as well? 
have the ship going forward, you know? It, it doesn't work where you, the moment you stop clicking the accelerator, the ship doesn't stop. The ship keeps on moving in the one direction. Yeah? That's how it works in space and everything. But that's not how the force works. Darkness doesn't rise to meet light. Light doesn't rise to meet darkness. That's not how it works either. That's not why Rey is so strong, because Kylo Ren is strong. Because with that type of mentality, then no one would ever be overpowering the other, because everyone would be equal. Two Sith, the rule of two, the two Sith would have been as strong as the entire Jedi order in the prequel trilogy, but that's not how it works. But they're just writing it so it makes sense for why Rey could possibly be powerful enough to defeat Kylo Ren. So like I said earlier, here's the more development of that conflict and the whole permanent um, effect it could possibly have on Rey. Because now we've confirmed that Snoke bridged their two minds. And the idea is that she's been played into a trap. So she's surely going to have some sort of consequence from her mistake of coming here. But will that be the case? Oh, look at her piloting the ship. What a good yeah, job she's doing. I have no problem with them saying Godspeed, because you know it could. It's not everyone has to believe in the Force. You know, some people can believe in whatever God or whatever thing it is in the Star Wars universe they want. Yeah. <laughs> I can't take him seriously. You just can't take him seriously. And he slaps him as well. It's like, oh my God, how much are you going to try to destroy this character? Yeah. See, one thing I do like, the reason why DJ knows about the whole, all the little transports that are leaving is because he heard Finn talk to Poe about it, that they're fueling all the little transports. And he actually noticed because the scene, the camera cuts to him when it happens. I forgot to mention that earlier, and it's good. You don't notice it, yeah. but it's a small detail that adds more to this moment. Finn and, Finn and Poe, uh, not Poe, Finn and uh, Rose doing this like doing this whole secret mission yeah it didn't bring any good but it brought the deaths of these people yeah that's the only thing that it actually achieved yeah and i have i have no big problem with that per se to be honest because there's still some sort of outcome as a result of their yeah. action it may not have brought that big of a effect but it brought something at least it's just there to pad time i believe the problem is that with the whole Finn and Rose thing, even though it led to the, some destruction of the transports, it brought like so few rebel, uh, resistance members towards the base. The problem is, in the long run, they pretty much all still make it to the base. So there's no real consequence in the long run, much like what's going to come up with Rey shortly. So here's the big thing. Everyone's like, oh, the Emperor was betrayed by Darth Vader and he didn't see it coming. But here's the problem and why you can't compare that moment in Return of the Jedi to this moment in The Last Jedi. Because here, Snoke is trying to sense Kylo Ren's desire to kill Rey. He's openly sensing it. In The Return of the Jedi, the Emperor wasn't sensing Vader's decision to kill Luke. Emperor was focused on killing Luke. And that's what was, his main purpose was. But in this moment, Snoke is like eyes closed. And he's like all this, you know, this doesn't help. The Emperor wasn't saying, I cannot be betrayed. I see into Vader's mind in everything. He was just trying to convert Luke. See, look, the Snoke is focusing on Kylo Ren's actions. He's focusing on act what Kylo Ren is doing, but he's so weak that he can't, for some reason, sense that it's actually being done against him. And that's the difference between this scene and Return of the Jedi. And why Snoke, even though he's so powerful apparently, he's meant to be stronger than the Emperor, which J.J. Abrams said in The Force Awakens, Snoke is stronger than the Emperor and Darth Vader, but he is so weak that he can't sense this. And look how slowly the guards react. <laughs> they react so slowly. I mean, oh. once they come back, maybe they didn't actually see what happened. Oh, they see a lightsaber coming that way, you kind of sense it. And the music cue there was really good, and you're like, oh wow, they're gonna join, and it's really nicely done. Until this moment. Look, she's gonna kick three people! Oh, look, they all they all held their swords to the bottom to, for her attack. Did you see that? No. Oh my god, they, they actually stood there for a second, held their swords for her to swipe down, and then she kicks three people and everything. 
it just doesn't. Oh my god, it's so poorly done that fight. Big tuna. <laughs> See, like, why would you have material that lights up so easily, and not nothing to put it out with, like automatically or anything? Oh wow, that's one consequence. She actually gets a mark on her arm. Legit, that's the only thing to really come from this. That's a, a consequence to her personally, as Ray. The only yeah. And why did he let go of his lightsaber? He he's trained though. If it was Ray, I can understand. You know, she might panic. Ah, oh, his sword disappeared. I noticed this in cinemas. I always say it. I saw it happening. It doesn't make sense. And why does he let go of her? Why does he let her go when she swipes when she drops down? It doesn't make sense. See, look, where he touched it, where does he ignite the lightsaber? He didn't push anything down. The Sith? The Jedi, the Rebel. The, Re the Rebels are already dead. You're the Resistance now. The First Order. The Sith. L Kylo Ren and Snoke aren't Sith. That's what J.J. Abrams said. In The Force Awakens, they're not Sith. So the Sith are already gone. The Rebels are already gone. This is a movie this problem has. They keep on saying the res Rebels instead of the Resistance. Because you're not rebelling anything. You're resisting the First Order, but you're not rebelling against any government. Because apparently in The Force Awakens, when she read, when Kylo read into her mind, she downloaded all his training. And that's why she's so skillful. Hmm? That's, that's, the, that's the reasoning they give, even Wait, though it's not in the movie. You have to be really advanced to do something? Well, she's Rey. She can do anything. So here's the thing. There's no permanent consequence for Rey on her own. She finds out that her parents are nobody, sure, but she's not really affected by it all that much. Yeah? She's crying a little bit, but it's not enough to convert her. It'd be, it'd be fine if she joined Kylo Ren, and you can say, okay, there's a consequence of it. But she doesn't. In this moment, see, everything could have been rewritten to include Admiral Akbar as Admiral Holder's um, character. You just changed it from the whole... You take it, change the plot a little... So that way, um, Poe isn't such a villain and uh, Holdo isn't, Ad Akbar then wouldn't be such a villain and whatnot. And instead, have him make the sacrifice and everyone would love it. You know, instead of this person, which for three quarters of her screen time, I'd say even nine tenths, pretty much all of her screen time, 90% of her screen time, we hated her. And here's the other question. So in The Force Awakens, Rey was able to pull the lightsaber away from Kylo, even though he was force reaching for it. But in The Last Jedi, only a few, two days later, max, she... But I think the build up to this crescendo and this climax of this few scenes, these few scenes, is really well executed. It's just a shame that a lot of what's going on really is really infuriating. And I love how she was pulling him by his foot. <laughs> what? And all of the stormtroopers that were here were killed. Except for, them. Except for these ones. And they were so near, they were like right in front of one another. And now they're like so far away from each other. That's still what she was worried about. Yeah. So why do they, do they even think it's a good idea to fire at that with normal blasters? You know it won't work. You b built that stuff. Why would you try it? You just killed your arch nemesis who had like four minutes of screen time across two movies. Do you need a lift? <laughs> Seriously, Captain Phasma was so wasted. Even if they brought her back in this one. Oh my god. Well. Well, yeah, god, that's, that's, that's like... Funny. That's funny ugly. Uh -huh. Long live the Supreme Leader. What? <laughs> It doesn't make sense. It would make sense if he said the Supreme Leader isn't dead. Yeah, the, the dialogue in that whole scene was a bit messy. It was so messy. Um, what's his name? Hux. That's a beautiful shot, but uh, yeah. it doesn't make sense though. What happened? And then he answered him. And then Kylo asked him, asked him what happened. Uh, what happened, yeah. So he's like, why are they closing the door now? Why wouldn't you just close the door before someone them. comes? Because they're waiting for Finn. They don't know that's Finn. Uh, Remember? Yeah. They, they don't. Look at all. Oh, two people just died there. because four, five, five, six people just died because they left the door open. Leia was standing right there. Why would you leave the door open? You can see outside. We know you can see outside. Through like scopes and stuff. So why would you do... leave? Look at them. They're blasting. They don't know it's Finn and Rose. 
I wonder why Rose is the one they sent to go check the artillery and stuff. They're surely better people. She has no human interaction and stuff, as we've established before. But <laughs> I love it. Hope oh, this place holds up. And it's shaking and stuff. Yeah, but here's the question. How much of the... How many Star Destroyers or how much of a functional Star Destroyer was left that they were able to bring all of this down and still operate it? Because they all looked decimated. And only Snoke's ship had more than half of it intact. So I'm not really sure whether or not that still means it's functional or not to actually move and transport. But it's enough to bring those down at least. To the suddenly shaky camera throwing the field. But I love the idea of the planet. Crate is one of my oh, favorite planets. Like yeah. It's just such a well-designed planet. And it looks amazing. I love how this guy's first instinct is to taste the dirt. It, it looks like it's a different shade of dirt. Is it? Yeah, a different shade of dirt. Oh, let me taste it. <laughs> oh my god. You would have just cost the resistance a member. <laughs> Why would they send Finn out on this? Why would they send Rose? She works in engineering. She's not a pilot. It doesn't make sense. I love that shot. That's funny. Yeah, see, what, what's the point of these ships? Look how far away the First Order is. Why would you send these ships out anyway? Yeah, so far away. They're going so fast. If something does happen, they are stranded far if away. <laughs> if. That's a big, a huge if. <laughs> Questions it. This whole time he's been like... What? Like he's been teetering on like good and bad and now he's suddenly just like fuck up. Yeah, Kylo Ren's always been teetering on both sides. But then all of a sudden he is just full on bad. You're right. Yeah. So I'm just repeating what my sister says just in case you can't pick it up on the audio. I don't know if you can or not, but so that might get annoying, but just in case. Because she's sitting far away now. Um, but yeah. We saw how hard it was for Luke and Han to destroy a few TIE Fighters in A New Hope. But look how easily Rey is doing it. Yeah. She has, that's it, my sister said it. Rey has no flaws, that's it. And the battering ram cannon, why would they, what a name. See, even Kylo Ren sees General Hux as pathetic. In The Force Awakens, they were like rivals for Snoke's attention. Yet in this movie, they're not. They should have kept it going. They exactly should have kept it going. But sorry, they immediately destroyed Hux's character at the start of this movie. And then Kylo Ren was uh, mixed up because all of a sudden he's not really um, half-hearted about his decisions anymore. He's just full-on evil and just like what I said earlier when the consequences with Rey there's no consequences with her actions to go to Kylo the lightsaber is destroyed yeah sure she can rebuild that we know she rebuilds it it's not it was also Kylo Ren who made that but she because of her decision she got nothing wrong despite Snoke telling her otherwise despite Kylo Ren telling her otherwise despite Luke Skywalker telling her otherwise only thing that happened because of her action was that Snoke died she was still in the right because of her action. Snoke died. She wasn't the reason why the Resistance ships were destroyed. She wasn't the reason why anything bad happened to the Resistance. Yeah. She was still in the right, even though her decision was a stupid decision to make. It's a very interesting thing. So we see he's in direct line. The guns are metal. Mel metal is melting. Yet Finn, a human, is still able to withstand the firepower or the pressure from the heat from expelling from this battering ram cannon. Miniaturized Death Star tech is able to melt metal and even make the fire go around at the base's border, the ri dr thingy. Maybe the but he's just sweating. He's only sweating. Maybe the cockpit is it's not though. It's open. The cockpit is open though. And Rose just comes out of nowhere. And you, she, like she could have killed him. They both could have died. And look how far away they are from the base. They're so far away from the base. To get there. It took them so long to get there. How long is it going to take them to get back? Who knows? Oh, no, wait. We all know nothing at all. Like he wrote the script, Ryan Johnson. He just wrote the script. And then he was just like, you know what? I'm happy with this. 
And he just wrote it. He didn't even read it again or anything. He just wrote it. First draft. First draft, I feel like. And we know he wrote the first draft before The Force Awakens was out. Because he was the reason why Luke doesn't have the Force. He told J.J. Abrams, don't have Luke using the Force at the end of the movie. Because J.J. Abrams was like, I'm oh, going to have him using floating rocks and all this kind of stuff around him using the Force. Nah. First time I saw this, I thought everyone else was like standing still and like frozen in time or something. Yeah. But it's a, it's a good moment. This is a good moment. Uh, I feel like she can sense it. It's a good moment. You can't take away from this moment. It's a sad moment. You just really wish that, that they had one with all three of them. Yeah. Cause that you can't have that anymore, and it's a wasted potential. It's probably one of the considering how many good lightsaber battles we have. I'd say this is on par with Grievous versus Obi Wan, memes excluded, because that fight isn't the best, and this fight isn't the best yeah. either. Because, yeah, it's a cool, it looks cool and everything. And all the small details that go into it are really nice, but there's so many things just wrong with it. He just needs the chair turning. I love the idea of the, I forgot to bring up the at ats I love the way that they've developed those at least. Yeah, you know, you keep, like the gorilla Yeah, ones. the gorilla, the gorilla at ats so cool. You keep them the same, but you develop the idea. That's exactly what you need to do for everything else. When I first saw this scene, I was like, I was just imagining, because obviously I didn't know his force projection. Yeah. You... I was just imagining him like, shoo, 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 <laughs> like dodging all of the bullets. Yeah, see, I, I remember when I first saw this, I noticed, oh, he has his, his beard is cut and everything. He has the lightsaber. It's all, so many things are, are not what they're meant that, to be. Because I was just like, oh my God, how did... Caught like, in the moment, here? yeah. But then the, what I imagined, I was like, okay, maybe he's just stopping everything with the force. Because you know you can hold force, yeah, hold it's quite bullets with the force. Well, he's powerful enough that he can project himself here. Yeah. Let me get this. Reveal. So they're all cool shots, though. Yeah, it's all really cool shots. And then also the fact that he's not dirty at all. Yeah, that that gives away the idea that he's not actually there. I only, I didn't like. In the moment, you don't pick up on these. Yeah, I only realized obviously when the obvious moment. Yeah, when the foot. when the foot. Yeah, but the thing is, I also like the brush he gives because it's not like too on your nose or too like Marvel humor like. Yeah. It's enough where it works in Star Wars. That doesn't work though. I don't like that. Yeah. Just he's a rag doll still, and Finn's managed to make it. Did Luke just not get blasted outside the entrance? Yeah, right. How the hell did how these did two make it? make it here in time? And what? How are they not caught in the fire? Yeah, how are they not caught in the fire? There's only one entrance, right? Yeah, Luke clearly acted when he was talking to Ray. He's clearly feeling but apologetic here, for what he did. But like, but here he's not apologetic. Yeah, here he's not po apologetic at all. It doesn't make sense. I thought it's just. Yeah. I thought he was gonna be like, like not obviously. Oh, I'm so sorry, this and that. But I thought he would mention it, and there would be some kind of like conversation. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there should be some sort of change of dialogue between the two over the situation that was current explored through the flashbacks. See, just watching this fight, the reason I don't like it is because Luke moves way too unnaturally. Yeah. For someone of his age yeah. or his experience and whatnot, at least. He doesn't move, like, he should move fluently, yeah, and creatively, because he's got, obviously, that skills of a Jedi, but he shouldn't move this way, like the Matrix. Look at him, what, that does not look good at all. Look at that, what the hell, who the hell moves like that? You know, I don't know, yeah. I don't know who thought that was a good idea. Okay, wait. Okay, he does. He says, I'm sorry, but look how he says it, he says it in such a pathetic manner. What war? There was no war. <laughs> that makes sense because there was no war before this. In regards to, to the resistance and the first order. I like the cutting between that sequence, but oh my god, this looks terrible. <laughs> Who looked at that? That's a cool shot, but the, uh, when you see the boulders in, in, like individually, yeah. oh, who thought that was good? Uh, it's nice seeing them together together again because they've yeah. got they've got a good um, chemistry on screen and everything. The fight itself was pretty bad because of how Luke moved and everything, and it wasn't even real. It should have been a real Luke, I think. 
Oh, uh, you think that's how he should have died? I, I don't think he should have died. He definitely should have died. Should, shouldn't have died at all in this episode. He should have stayed on to the next episode. Yeah, for sure. Snoke shouldn't have died. A lot of questions raised in this as to like who lives and dies. But this moment itself, I don't mind there being a new force power or anything. I like the fact that he's force projecting. I like the fact that he's force projecting, but I don't think he should have died as a result of the force projection. Mm. I get he hasn't used the force in a long time and it can take a lot out of you. Like Mark Hamill said, it's like a um, overdose of sort. But I think it would have been better for the story if he stayed a, stayed alive. Love just trolling Kylo Ren. That's such a good moment. But once again, it renders him as a lesser imposing villain than what he could have been. Well, the sun just suddenly changed positions. Did you notice that? The sun was like directly across from the rock and then it was suddenly up higher. And then now is it is it back directly across from the rock? See, this is a good moment. I wouldn't have mind if he died like this midway through episode 9. Yeah. This would work midway through episode 9, but not here. Not here, because he wasn't in episode seven, uh, 7 at all. It's not enough time with the character. I didn't cry when I first saw this. I, I And didn't. there are two sons all of a sudden, and they're right across from him. How much time has passed? Because Tatooine. I know, because Tatooine, but he's not, he's just like, keep it consistent, mate. Seriously. And see, no, the other son's got, there's no light coming from the corner where the other son was. Yeah. And his metal arm shouldn't disappear with him. Luke Skywalker dying should have brought a tear to almost every Star Wars fan's eyes. It didn't. The, it like, didn't. Han's death did. That's Han's, what I wanted with. Yeah, and Han's death was predictable. But yeah, you can still get emotional still, over yeah. it. Yeah. And one final connection between the two of them. Oh, and look at the symbolism. I said that too early again. <laughs> when... Wait, what did 3PO say that? Let me just wait. There are certain things you don't pick up unless you watch it with subtitles. Yeah. I need to rewatch that. What was that? Oh, Broom Boy's hand is in the thumbnail. When we get to the outer room, I have a contact there. Oh, who said that? I don't know who said that because I couldn't see. But that's interesting. I never heard that before. See, who wants a death like that? You can have sadness, pain with peace and purpose. You know, yeah. that's that's possible. No, How do you build a rebellion? Like... You're not building a rebellion. Oh, what are you rebelling? The First Order doesn't govern the galaxy. They bloody lost so much of their fleet. No one governs the galaxy. No the one governs the galaxy. Because... Because... They haven't, like, the First Order hasn't, like, established, like, a government. And they've lost their leader. They've also lost the Supreme Leader's yes. ship and how many other ships. There are better ways to go than what we've seen in this movie. And, it, yeah, just focus on focusing on this movie for the most part. Hopefully you enjoyed this commentary <laughs> of The Last Jedi. If you haven't seen the other parts, check them out. Put a link in the description down below and also on the ends of the video here. Um, so make sure you hit that like button. Subscribe to my channel for more videos. And overall, basically The Last Jedi, my least favorite Star Wars movie. But one that I can definitely always watch because there's no Star Wars movie I hate. And how about you, Panna? You got anything to say? My sister, sorry. In case I said Panna, Panna means sister. So just in case you were wondering, my sister's been here. And whenever I said Panna, <laughs> that's what I mean, sister. Yeah? You got anything you want to close with? Not really. I mean, it was, like, it's a good movie. Like, if you take out all the bad bits. No, that's, that's a dumb thing to if say. If you take out all the bad bits, <laughs> it's a good movie. If you take out all the bad bits, it'd be a good movie, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it's, there are so many wasted opportunities. It's like Lupita Nyong'o, Donald Gleeson... Two characters very wasted. Two actors very wasted. Gwendolyn Christie, very wasted. Kelly Marie Tran, fine actress in what she did. Poor character. Laura Dern, fine but actress. That's not her. Poor character. Yeah, that's not her fault. It's that's not her writing. fault, but it's the writing. She did it fine. She acted it fine. There's not much to compare her to, to be honest. Yeah. It's either that character existed or that character didn't. And I prefer if that character didn't exist. I just wonder how they're going to have like Carrie Fisher in the last movie. I'm pretty sure they, re they wrote everything around Carrie Fisher's 
scenes. Yeah, as in, like, there's only so much they can do with the scenes. The there is only so much he can do. But yeah. at the same time... There, I hope that, that, that it's that not, li- like, that's suddenly, a- like... She's just behind the scenes, like, not really doing She's anything. not. It, it was meant to be episode 9. It was meant to be her story. And I'm sure they're not stupid enough to kill her off. Uh, I'm sure they're not stupid enough to kill Chewbacca or Lando off either. I hope not. Because, because then it's just like, what, each movie, one of them Yeah, dies. each movie. So, episode 7 was Han's movie, and he dies. Episode 8 was Luke's movie, and he dies. Episode 9 is Leia's movie... She better not die. They bet they have to keep Lando, Chewie, and Leia yeah, alive. They, they can't just be like, okay, we're moving on to the next generation. So and we're killing kill off the old. Off. I know that's not how it works. Yeah. And then the other thing is, if Ray stick keeps the Falcon, I'm gonna be angry. Chewie should keep the Falcon. Obviously. Yeah, but it could. She could easily keep it. But anyway, we'll leave a discussion of the episode nine to another date. Hopefully, hopefully you've enjoyed this commentary on the last Jedi slash analysis. I don't really know. I was planning for it to be an analysis, but I just kept on talking over the film instead of breaking a lot of it down. Nonetheless, you can clearly see that it's much worse than The Force Awakens. Characters are clearly butchered. Storylines are cut immaturely. And in a sense, there is no consequence for Rey, the main character, who seems to be perfect at everything. Her actions, which were deemed irresponsible and poor to go follow Kylo and Snoke, had no consequence on the greater story. And her personally, she got a cut. That's the only thing that happened. None of the thing bad happened to the Resistance because of her. Snoke died because of a decision. And that's about it. Mm-hmm. Anyway, until next time, make sure you hit that subscribe button. And I'll catch you on next time. Bye. See ya.